Um, today I am here with Andy Moses, and he's one of the artists from Amstel Galleries. Amstel Galleries is actually based in uh, Amsterdam, but he, Andy here, is actually based in Los Angeles. He's a Los Angeles-based artist. So Andy, it's so great for you to be with us today. Um, great to be here. Can you introduce yourself briefly and sure. tell us what yeah. you do? My name's Andy Moses. I grew up in Southern California, in Santa Monica. I went to CalArts. I moved to New York in the early 80s and um, moved back to LA in 2000. It just felt like LA had really sort of come into its own by that point. Um, I'm a painter and I work with very kind of organic processes in my painting. I, it took me 15 or 20 years to figure out most of the processes that I work with. I work flat on the ground and I pour paint and I manipulate it by moving the canvas, by moving by special tools that I built to manipulate the paint around. And it's all with the effect of trying to get something that looks organic, that it's not made by hand. Wow. But it also, it, it's, it really rides the line between abstraction and pictorialism. Okay. So I'm working with a lot of very abstract and organic processes, right. but the paintings tend to look like landscape, landscape that you might see looking out the desert or flying over the desert or looking at the ocean. It's sort of one thing I've noticed is that patterns, even from fractals all the way up, repeat on so many different levels. So I'm looking for the kind of universal pattern that by moving paint in these ways, that one simple gesture can be an ocean, it can be a landscape, it can be desert, but it's very much within the tradition of kind of free form abstract painting as well. So I want the sort of the strong gesture and the sense of color really having a certain kind of value attached to it where it really it sort of steers the way you're the way you're thinking in certain specific directions so but I'm still working with something that's somewhat pictorial right so you're basically looking for the Fibonacci sequence of art there we go I like that <laughs> yeah I like that yeah um, so it's because drip painting is often associated with just uh, very amorphous mm -hmm. kind of images. What? How have you been received? How do people receive your work? Are they shocked? Are they surprised? Well, I, I, it's been a gradual warming up, I say, because uh -huh. abstraction has its devotees, and I think that my painting wouldn't exist without Jackson Pollock. Okay. So the idea of breaking free and just letting the paint move. But then I was interested in then taking the, that kind of form or the freedom of paint and then turning it back into something that's a little bit more recognizable, a little almost, more pictorial. It's turning like abstract art on its head. I like that. Back to Absolutely. realism. That's, back to realism. That's mind boggling, really. Um, yeah. So is Jackson Pollock one of your inspirations? Without a doubt, he is. Uh, Rothko is a big inspiration, just in the way that the he creates atmosphere with just simple, simple color mm -hmm. combinations, creates sort of infinite space, but also a kind of emotional resonance when you look at him. So I feel like there's the energy of someone like Pollock, there's that kind of emotional resonance in someone like um, Rothko. But it owes a lot to the history of painting. Everyone from Titian. Right. I actually love a lot of uh, Asian painting oh, as really? well. A lot of Japanese and Chinese landscape painting. So is it pretty exciting to be here and to see the China Today um, exhibition? It is. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing what's happened with Asian art in terms of the exposure. I mean, I'm sure it's been going strong there for years. Right. But I I'm haven't sure been exposed right. until the last 10 or 15 years wow. to Chinese art and Japanese art, Korean it's, art. It's almost been like hidden from the world, especially Chinese art, hasn't it? Without a doubt. Except for historical Chinese landscape, which, right. like I said, I've always loved. I yeah. always love that sense of because it's a similar kind of thing of finding these universal patterns. Mm -hmm. You see these mountains, these rocks, mm -hmm. these flowing waters, but they're done with very simple, simple forms. Mm -hmm. And they're always very mysterious and out of focus. And right. they really, it's interesting because Chinese landscape painting, to me, everyone's always looking for the roots of abstraction in right. Western painting. Yeah. And you can trace it back maybe 100 or 150 years. Right. But to me, it's so much Chinese landscape painting was always on the verge of abstraction. And these are paintings going back 500 or 1,000 years, years, thousands yeah. of years. It's a certain connection that with nature of making the person very small mm -hmm. and making these very so vast scale. Right. scale. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in scale in that similar way. Mm -hmm. It feels like this infinite space when you look at my painting that you can walk in and it goes, it basically goes forever. Mm -hmm. There's there's suggestion of horizon, wow. but it ke the but space keeps receding further and further back the more you look at it. Wow. 
So, uh, how many years have you been involved with the LAR show? Uh, this is, I believe, my fifth year showing here. Fifth year? But yep. this is your first year with Amstel? First year with Amstel okay. Gallery. We and actually met last year. And how did she woo you? How did she get you <laughs> over to her? Well, it wasn't hard. I mean, uh, she's got a great gallery and she's just got a great personality. We met through a mutual friend, Daniel mm -hmm. Maltzman, mm -hmm. and uh, he brought me in and introduced, introduced her. Mm -hmm. And she came to my studio the day after the LA Art Show closed wow. last year. So she's persistent. And from that point on, we've been working together. Wow. Yeah. So uh, Petra tells us that she enjoys artwork with a little bit of uh, sexiness to it, something a little bit different. And I think uh, Andy Moses definitely brings that out in his art. He's doing something really different. He's doing something really, um, he's taking, it's like it's like art has gone full circle. Uh, we've gone from realism to completely abstract and back to realism again. Um, thank you, Andy, so much for being on the show with us today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.